is it. This is the tedious part. It's not, it is certainly not rocket science. And um, I am not a mason by trade. However, Thank you. I've, you know, I know masons. I grew up on the dairy farm. There was, um, there was a guy who used to do a lot of the rock wall work and a lot of the masonry. Because there was always either a field stone foundation to be repointed or... The guy was super talented. So, if there's any actual masons out there watching, I'll take any... Um, I don't know, advice, criticisms you got, let me have it. Let him have it. <laughs> let me have it. Look at that big, beautiful rectangle of granite. Look at it. I want to, I'm trying to make a spot for it because I really love it. But every time I do... It doesn't work. Ah, it's always like, you want to add like a little piece of something. Oh. Like right now, I'm a little high in the back, and it's making it, it's throwing it out. I want this thing to, it's just not too often you come across a chunk of granite like that. Look at that. It's like it was cut. So, I'm trying to make it work to the best of my ability. And the best part is, is these were all free. They came right from our property. Yep. If you're getting ready to buy land, which... Probably not the best time in the world to buy, but it will be someday. Right. Sure you buy land's got lots of good trees on it and uh, lots of good rock. Yeah. Nice. One more flat one. Look at that. Look at his staging, the way it's set up. The scaffolding. <laughs> I always say staging, it's scaffolding. Look at that. I get my rocks up here. By the bucket. Yeah, I got some bucket fulls going. How many trees do you think it took to build your cabin and do you keep count? Okay, so this is an interesting question we were just talking about last night because the fact that out of one tree you can get you know, one to four logs. And with our logs in our home build, we did three feet to 17 feet. We have two in our log cabin that are 30 feet. Um, so I'd say 2000, what did you say? Linear feet? You explain it, you're, you're the man, you well, got it. There's two questions. It's how many trees you took to build the cabin? And I can't give an honest answer on that. I could try to give an estimate. The other question is how many logs? So these logs, all the logs you see in the walls, those weren't found naturally straight and round. I made them straight and round. I cut them on the sawmill. What I'd do is I'd take a tree and I'd cut it into a 12 inch square. So it'd be a 12 by 12, like a beam. That's our sawmill. It's the wood Then I'd cut the corners off it to make it in the shape of like a stop sign. And then I'd cut those corners off and that gives it that, that round look. And you just hit the high spot. So a big thick tree, big three foot diameter tree, you get six, seven logs out of it. So I think the best way to answer the question would be linear feet. How many linear feet of log did you use? Meaning 10, 12 inch logs. So that's about the diameter of the average. I mean, there's the maples in there are like eights. It's probably some tens. So on the average, we'll just say, we'll just call it like eights and twelves. About 2,000 linear feet, if you were to put them all on a line, like 2,000 feet worth. How many trees? Or trees, I'd say it depends. You might only get one log out of a tree. The tree might be all crooked, but it might have a good section to it. If I had to guess, I'd say 125 trees, maybe. Would you agree with that, or would you say more? I'm, I mean, it's been so many years, that would be my guess, though. Trees? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe a little more. Maybe more. Maybe 150. But, um, 150 trees. Yeah. And we use predominantly eastern white pine, but you can also find maple. Um, what are our wooden dowels made of? Oak? Yeah. But that was that, that was oak that I, um, I'd buy like an oak board. Probably like a one by six oak board. Right. 
and I'd cut it into uh, one by one strips. Oh, thank you. The linear feet answer was perfect. Appreciate it. Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I first started linear learning about it, we talked perfect. about it. I was like, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> linear feet answer gave it to me. Please stop talking about it. <laughs> so, yeah, why are we talking about logs when you're seeing rock? It's just because we are a DIY log cabin build with that sawmill over there. But we're working on the chimney. He's working on the chimney. Got a comment. I want to buy land, but I'm trying to figure out how many and what types of trees I'm going to be looking for. I definitely want this type of chimney. I love that it adheres to the house. Here's to the house. Yeah, but buy at a better time because right now the market sucks. I should buy at a better time. Yeah, but we have mostly eastern white pine. We used eastern white pine, but like, why, honey? Because the boats used them when they crossed the Atlantic? It was just what there was a lot of. They're, they're tall, they're big. When they dry out, they're dry, they're, they're light, they're strong. It's easy to work with. It's a soft wood, so you can chisel it. And uh... But like, you see the cabins up in Canada, they make them out of pure uh, cedar. Imagine if you had cedar. Imagine if you could buy a piece of land with all cedar trees on it. Imagine the smell. Thank you so much. Love what you guys are doing. We do too, honestly. It's been pretty, pretty cool. Center screen your live video. You know, if you bought a piece of land and there was all oak trees, um, oak is incredibly strong. I don't know if I'd do a log cabin with it, but think about the uh, timber frame you could do. About the large timber frame It'd be incredible are we going to be installing metal roofing that is our ultimate Toronto. dream we want to but Toronto. but i don't know it could be a shingle situation just to get in here originally and then metal but we definitely want to at first we were looking at the standing seam um but now corrugated metal is much more affordable and we've come to really like the look of it so hopefully like the looks of the corrugated yeah timeless they say it's an exposed fastener system and those fasteners leak but i see plenty of houses that have corrugated metal and whoop i got it that for me. yep I see plenty of houses that have corrugated metal it doesn't look like anybody's coming out of there with a range yet okay why are you doing that Making it stick out too far. What I do is I take the trowel. I don't even know how long. I think it's like eight inches. And see that point right there? And I put it against the block. If it's sticking out far that past that point, it's sticking out too far for my liking. So I typically I won't use it. I won't use this rock in this scenario. Put that to the side. Look at this piece of quartz, huh? Beautiful. Look at that thing. Probably save it for somewhere where it's more visual, but it's got such a great shape to it. No, nope, it's not a good spot either. Well, at least it's a gorgeous day. Oh, look, it's a heart shaped rock lease. Aww. So if you don't know, the whole reason why our name is Rock Art Cabin is because over the years, my sons, our sons, we have three boys, they would collect rocks in the shape of hearts and give them to me. So I kept all of them and we're going to incorporate them into this chimney belt. So that's how we got the name Rock Art Cabin. These are these like brick tie fasteners. They'll rip you open. He's been cut by them a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so you add the mortar to each stone and then go back after and fill in more. Is that correct? Yeah. So someone's asking. I, um, I put as much mortar in between the rocks as I can. And I try to, I try to make it so that it's like a stack so much as a veneer. I know if you went and you bought like a stone veneer, they'd be thin. 
and you'd put it on with a tooth trowel and you'd stick it. And uh, these are like, you know, rocks right out of the ground. So they're very oddly shaped. Like, and um, they're shaped like a top round roast beef from Market Basket. <laughs> they're tough to, so I got to stack them. So the weight is holding them. And um, I just lay the brick ties in between. You can take a look up above, see what I got going right here. Well, then I take my finger and I press in the joints. Oh, I bet the veneer stone is beautiful. Probably not as heavy, too. Yeah, we were just at the, um, the masonry supply shop and they had, uh, you could buy, they were stones, they were natural stones. They weren't like a... Thank you. You know, sometimes they make them out of like a, I don't even know what it's made out. It's like some sort of a pressed material. It's masonry, but it's like a created material. It's not, it's not natural rock. And um, they take the rocks and they must have a place they just cut them. They take them and they split them so that they're flat on the back. This is like, uh, this is probably like eight inches. And I mean, it's a, it's a lot of weight. That everybody loves to ask me, if, you know, is it going to hold? I, I hope so. I don't see why it wouldn't. Yes, it's beautiful. I remember that picture. In this sucker. <laughs> Will it hold? This I brick, don't know. Where can it go? This brick down in the basement. I mean, it starts in the basement. It's 30 and a half feet, but it's very, it's very big, very sturdy. It'll hold. Hopefully. If it doesn't, we'll go live and we'll show you the damage. If it doesn't, I'm going to set up a GoFundMe page. So. <laughs> It'll hold. Save me. Save me. It's just like a top round roast beef. It does look that way. That's what I made last night. <laughs> got, got a laugh on that one, honey. You want to stack them. They got to not only kind of fit without taking up too much mortar, and at the same time, you want to so they're ramped toward the wall. Look at that, Look at that humdinger. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I'll probably use that on a corner though. Mm, I so would. If you don't know, we are a DIY log home build. We have a sawmill over there, a portable sawmill. You can see all our sawmill pile. And uh, we use the trees off our property if to build this log to home. If you a sawmill, one of the things they won't tell you is how much, um, how much waste. Not waste, I don't know the word for it. Like scrap. So like, show them the pile of sawdust. Well, there's the sawdust and then there's the wood pile. I mean. And then you're gonna have scraps of wood. Like, that's just cut off. Lots of scraps of wood. <laughs> it's not a waste. We're going to be using it to heat ourselves. Oh, definitely. This is what this chimney's for. Yep. Um, we got some chickens coming soon. My brother's been after me. He's got some chickens he raised up. They're ready to, be, they're ready to start laying. And he wants me to take them before they start pumping out eggs and he can't keep up with it. That's right. So that sawdust will be really good for that. Even though it's wet down in the center, you take the stuff off the top that the sun dries out and uh, it'll be great for animal bedding. <laughs> are those OSHA approved slides you're wearing? <laughs> <laughs> those are steel toe slides. <laughs> oh yes, we could definitely use it to fill in our garden beds. Absolutely. And for mulch, right on. Make sure you got the room for the stuff because when you get cutting. Right. You get cutting, you're going to have it coming out of your ears. Uh, I guess I like the looks of that rock. Not really, but. I always find when you're putting them on, I question like why you chose a certain rock, but then as it dries, I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah, that it's looks a great. Funny thing. I'm never happy with any rock that hits the thing, hits the wall, but. But working out of the buckets with the mortar, because it keeps it, keeps it from setting up too quick. This warm sun makes it, 
Makes it stiff fast. Oh yeah, the sun is warm today too. We wait all year for it to be like sunny and warm because it's so cold and the winters are long and there's lots of snow and then it, it's warm and it's like, oh yeah, the sun is really strong. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we complain about the cold, we complain about the heat. We're just complainers. Too hot, it's too cold. It was raining the other day. I felt like Lieutenant Dan on top of the boat. I was. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. Just gotten up here with a fresh batch of mortar. It wasn't supposed to rain all day. It was supposed to be cloudy, but it wasn't supposed to rain. And uh, it started to downpour. You guys see how much effort it takes to get a batch mixed up, get up here, get ready to go. And Oh, wow. She's in South Florida and the sun is super Ooh. strong there. I bet Ooh. my mother has a, a condo in Florida. She's a snowbird and um, it's uh, where is she located? She's near Punta Gorda in Venice. I won't give her location, exact location away. But yeah, she's on the Gulf Coast and she loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it. So last night I come out of our RV. I had a little fire going to find out where he is and it's completely dark, but it was so cool. He was up here finishing a bag of mortar and there were lightning bugs all around and there were like bats, a couple of bats in the area just flying about. I thought that was pretty neat. I was like, it's dark, get down. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm throwing more wood on the fire so you can see. Yeah, Florida's huge. Does anybody have a metal roof they recommend? Does anyone have a metal roof you recommend? Anyone? Or does anybody have some advice on masonry? Is that how you say it? Masonry? What about a good terracotta roof? Is that something they only do out in California? That would be beautiful, but I imagine that would be super expensive. If I had all the money in the world, I'd do copper and slate. You like it when it turns that patina color? Ah, uh, copper and slate's so cool. With the rock. So I want to say thank you for those that stuck around. And um, I hope you got something out of this. And we'll be back on soon. Take care, everyone.